Hello. Welcome. Oh, I'll take my phone off the, the table. Yeah, do that first. Professionalism is. Yeah. And that is. Oh, so. On. so I hope loads of people are, we are listening. Uh, <laughs> I'm still going to keep going with it. <laughs> uh, I know that nobody is. Um, but if you are, uh, tell everybody about it. Yeah, hit like, hit subscribe, do all that shit. Um, but yeah, we are Dan and Mike from Bicep and Banter. And I don't here. know why I keep I keep talking to yeah, the mic. Like it's really he's going to pick me up. He's going like, to pick me up. We're Dan and Mike from Bicep and Banter, and we're here to uh, share with you what we've done inside our business so that hopefully it can help you um, feel better about yours and fall, you're less likely to fall prey to the, uh, the business mentors that are out there circling like fucking ah. vultures. Well, that was actually scary. Yeah, vulture was that what we're supposed to be well, there? Bit of, well, yeah, kind of know, vulture. Just something I've just been working so, on yeah, for so. a few weeks. So, so the last uh, few videos we've been talking a lot about our business and, and how the foundation of that has been built on sort of getting client results. So we're going to talk to you today about how we actually do that to give you a bit of an insight into getting client results and why that's so important, obviously, to your business in terms of growth, in terms of all those sorts of things, because. There's a lot of mentors out there talking a lot about tactics and sales and payments and <laughs> client check-ins and making Solving. sure that you leverage your time and basically do no fucking work. Yeah. Um, so we decided to talk you through how we actually get results with clients and why that should be and will always be the cornerstone to any successful business. So f- your first step of getting client results starts with Instagram, believe it or not. Um, okay. It starts with the content that you're putting out. So... We do some work with our coaches on really kind of targeting and honing in on their niche. And you will have heard that topic before, niche, niche, niche. And oh, you probably Mike, I work with busy professionals who are sick and tired of weight, have not been able to lose weight. Four off. <laughs> um, yeah. That's, that's not, not a, niche. a niche, is that's it? That's niche. everyone. That's, that's just me, yeah. Yeah, that's and just everyone fucking else. everybody, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I want to work with, you know, I work with humans with like, you know, <laughs> Um, two eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, <laughs> like you, you haven't niched down at who, all. Who eats food? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come get me. It's we go deep in terms. Oh, oh we do go deep. First you're, time for everything. You're right. Um, yeah. As deep as we can, anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not big, but you know. No, whatever. it's basically a clip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's some old school, mate. <laughs> um, yeah. So it it comes from from knowing your niche, and it's and it's the wise behind that niche. It's how does your prospective client feel? So the type of person that you want to work with, how do they feel? Why do they feel it? What do they do? What don't they do? What do they like? What don't they like? And why? How do they feel when they walk to the gym? How do they feel when they're sat on the sofa? How do they feel when they're getting changed? How mm-hmm. do they feel? Like, why are they Why are they picking a meal deal? Why? Convenience, lack of knowledge, um, no, no time to cook, um, unsupportive partner. Like, why? Why, 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 why? If you want help with this, head over to our Instagrams, Dan buys its banner, Mike buys its banner. And if you click the link in our bio, we've got a training on this that is on YouTube unlisted. So you have to make sure you hit the link. Um, all about understanding your niche and how to talk to those people and all that sort of stuff. There you go. So, and if it's not there, just drop us a message on Instagram or send so it to you. It starts with that. And the reason why that is so important, and by the way, not just doing it in one post or two posts or three posts, I'm talking, you need to go in deep and this is, it needs to be a running theme of what you're, um, of what you're saying so, throughout. So I, we did this the other day for ours and we, did, we had three pages typed up and I did it with a client the other day and she'd had eight, eight lines written down and I just went and said, it's not enough. I said, that is not a niche. That is not a niche, eight lines. So we do this task with our clients again, like I just said, we, you can get access to that. Let us know if you want it, links in the bio. And we get them to basically sit down for five minutes and write out everything Mike just said. Five minutes nonstop, just writing everything out on pages upon pages upon pages. And it's amazing what comes out because you're just naturally thinking about it. And what we find is the easiest person to target is your former self of three, four years ago. Because you remember it, you know the feelings, you know the pain points, that sort of stuff. I think we think it's easier Mm -hmm. in general to do that. But... Like Mike said, it's the it's really deep into like how they feel when they wake up, when they when they're getting dressed, when they're getting undressed, you know, like when they see their partner, when they have to go to a night out, when their when their friends ask them if they want to go for that drink, mm-hmm. what do they feel? Do they start feeling anxious about what they're going to wear, how they're going to look, all those sorts of things? Like because then you start getting those messages on Instagram from people going, "Oh my God, your content's really great. It's like you're talking to me. It's like you're talking to me." Now, just saying I work with busy professionals and just putting up generic protein swaps on your Instagram, <laughs> no one's going to go, oh my God, that's talking to me. I really resonate with that. They're not. You start talking really in depth about these situations, these scenarios, people are going to go, that's me. That's how I feel. On a daily basis, they'll go, he's in my head. How does he you, know that? The, the problem with online coaches, one of, um, on Instagram, is that you look at other online coaches because... You're in the fitness industry, guys, and we follow fitness guys. Um, <laughs> like, you're not following real people. Like, you're following a lot of coaches. 
so you're you're absorbing what other coaches are doing and you're thinking that that's the way but what happens if that's wrong and you're copying it like what happens if the protein yeah. swaps or the protein tips or what happens if that's wrong what happens if that's not working so it, again getting client results we're really reverse engineering this here and, yeah. and, it, and it starts with the content so the theory being if you're then consistent with that content that the people that land on your page and the ones that hit follow are going to be more suitable on averages you're stacking the, the chips in your favor they're going to be more suitable for you as a client and then what you're doing is you're 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 almost warming this person up because nobody's going to whether you believe it or not no one's going to land on your page and go oh my fucking god i need to work with this person and they click the link in your bio that goes inquire with me inquire yeah. book with a call now straight away no one's doing that by the way no. no one's doing that by the way no, yeah take that out of your take that out straight away take that out that we should can, be we, that should be a lead magnet to your email list yeah. without we can, fail we can cover that down the line yeah we keep a little juicy yeah. dangle you can keep yeah. watching keep watching um but yeah, so then you're, in, you're engaging with them. And how are you engaging with them? You are putting out more content that keeps hitting them, that keeps, you know, that's something that they would want to watch or listen to or fucking view or whatever or read. Um, and then you might, you might chat to people. You might say hello to people, that, that, novel, um, that novel thing of, of actually chatting to people yeah. um, and building a relationship. And again, one's not enough or two's not enough it's like you should you should be talking to the people who are, who are regularly interacting so like we have it all the time where people sign up for a, a, you know one of our fat loss blitzers or they they inquire with coaching and we, we know the name because you, i mean you you're sat you know um you're sat here watch, watching this and you will know the names of some of the people that follow you engage mm -hmm. with those people and they're more likely to become a client so that when you then get on a sales call sales call consultation call fucking strategy call discovery, whatever you, call. discovery call whatever you fucking want to term it sales call um that they're already bought into you because you've been putting out content consistently that's talking to them that they find useful that they're benefiting from you've said hello to them you've been cordial you've been polite you've been friendly you've had a laugh in your dms you've got common ground you've given them some free advice so that they're just there to dot the i's and cross the t's that they're going to be working with you and then so this is how your client results start is that you're you're doing it from source so the, the client that you're getting in isn't fucking middle-aged Barbara from Londis because, I, but you want to work with guys doing photo shoots. The reason why you're getting middle-aged Barbara from Londis is because you're going, Zumba classes don't work. Fucking, I don't know, Slimming hex, World. Hex sausages, slimming world. hex sausages are better, yeah. than, better like, than normal. <laughs> yeah, fucking change your, change your tune. Like, <clears throat> um, it, it's, it's fucking mental. But, but anyway, so it starts at source. And, and that's the thing is that people will always say, like, like we talked about before, where people are looking to get any Tom, Dick and Harry into their, into their coaching. They're sending all the DMs. They're trying to charge up front for these things. You're getting people into your business that aren't the right, aren't the right fit. And the coaches that we work with on a one-to-one -one level, they've experienced as a previous mentors. They come to us and like, oh yeah, you know, I've, I've looked at my client list. I've got 12 people and actually nine of them, I don't actually enjoy coaching. Well, that's a problem then, isn't it? Because if you don't enjoy coaching them, guess what? They're going to pick up on that. They know they're not stupid. And I think it's one of those things where, yes, if you go and cold DM a thousand people, yeah, you're going to get five people sign up for your coaching. They're not going to be the right five people, not in a million years, but you've got a bit of money. And if that's all you're after, great, go for it. Keep you, doing that. You'll be sat there knowing as well. If you've done this, if you've done all the cold DMs and you've got in two, three, four, five clients, you will know. You will, you will, this again 100%. will resonate with you. Okay. They will not be, I bet you they don't, I bet you it's, they don't get you results. I bet you. No. 100% they won't. And that's where if, if you do that bit right, A, the sales call gets easier, which again, we'll do a video on that at some point in the future. But once they're in and once they're bought into you, they're bought into you as a person and as a coach. They're not, yes, they're bought into the idea of losing weight. They're bought into the idea of going to the gym and doing all those things, but they're bought into you as a person. They know and they trust you. They know that you're the person that's going to help them and they trust you implicitly with what you're saying. So then it comes down to, right, you've got them in. And once they're into your coaching, you then start providing them the value. And no, we're not talking about giving them 100 videos up front and telling them to do all this sort of shit and overwhelming them. Because again, that's another big problem that I see is people get someone signed up, send them a training hub of videos, uh, you know, hundreds of them. Right, crack on, there's your training plan. Good luck with that. Uh, I'll speak to you in two weeks. Well, okay, that's not really useful, is it? So in terms of that, like how we get client results is from the get-go, it's set up from, from the start is everything that you do is based around a full assessment of that human and that individual of where they're coming from. The amount of times I get messages from a new client, and go, oh my God, that's a lot of detail you go into in terms of my life and in terms of like, you know, my background and all these sorts of things. Like, yes, yes, because it's needed. This is, I say to them all the time, this yes. isn't about, this isn't about me having a fancy plan that I'm going to give to you that I've got, that I've got now and I'm ready to give to you. I need to know where you're at. I need to know what's going on. Then I'll give you the perfect plan for you and we'll go forward from there. Yeah. The amount of coaches that are ready with, I've got the, I've got the PDFs, don't worry. I'm sorted. Second you sign up, it's all going to be sent to you 
we don't send our clients anything when they sign up to do with their nutrition. Yeah, yeah. And going forward, the new stuff, it's what are you currently doing then? Yeah. Where are you currently at? Let's have a look at what you're cur- and I mean again, because we've nailed our niche, we feel we've nailed our, ni- nailed our niche, the amount of times you get that form those forms through, 80% of them are the same. Mm. Always the same problems. Yeah. All or nothing mentality. Overeat the weekends, no consistency, no accountability. Low protein. Low protein, not eating much veg. When they go to the gym, they kind of just do the same shit over and over again. Yeah. Easy. It's easy for us to go, right, well, we know. And that's where, like Mike said, this all starts from. It starts from your social media. It starts from getting the right type of client because that makes getting results far, far easier. Yeah, because, like, like, yeah, like pretty much nail on the head there, Dan. And, and they stay, they, they ultimately stay for longer because they're the right fit. Like, they ultimately stay for longer because you build a better relationship. And that's not a bad thing to say that they stay for longer. Like, I've got clients who have been with me, no joke, four or five years. Like, no so, joke. So this is the th- so the other argument, again, like the whole upfront thing we've talked about before, but this whole thing about you shouldn't have your clients with you for a long period of time, right? Why? Well, fitness is a lifelong endeavor. Health and fitness is a lifelong thing. Whether you come, whether they come to you for fat loss and then afterwards they want to run a marathon, that's not, that's not a bad thing. If they want to come to you for fat loss, then they want to go for muscle gain and then fat loss and muscle gain and they just want to constantly improve their physique, yeah. well, they still need a coach to do that. So get it out of your head that like, for some reason that people have this, oh, I just want to do the fat loss bit and then I'm, I'm all good. Well, no, it's a lifelong thing. Even people at the highest level, they have coaches. They need someone to help them through it each, each cycle, each month, each year. Things don't change. And I think that, that's what you need to kind of get into your head is that if I'm a good enough coach and I prove to them that I can get them the result they want, they're going to stick around. Well, Usain Bolt, like Usain Bolt didn't have coaching for the first three months and then go, right, yeah. you've taught me everything I need to know now. I'll just, I'll just, I'm pretty fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. probably, I'm probably faster than my coach probably. Yeah. So um, I'm fine now. It, yeah. That's not it. it. It's the fact that it's accountability. It's the fact that it's somebody structuring some stuff. It's the fact that it's somebody looking at you with an objective eye rather than an emotional one. And, and also, if you're a good enough coach, you should be talking to your client in a way where you, you're telling them that their fitness is an evolution thing. It's a, it's, it's not, it doesn't stop. It never stops. It's just the, the goalposts move a little bit. And I think that's the key thing is it's having that relationship with that. Again, comes back to having a relationship with the, with the client well enough to be able to talk them through that, talk them through the next phase, the next stage, how things are going to look in the future, how things are going to change for them in the future. Like I've got a couple of clients going through it at the moment. They're about to have a kid and it's like, okay, well, I've got experience with that. And I'll tell you what, this is what's going to happen. So these three months, you need someone to hold you accountable to these things because actually just doing this is going to be hard. Really? Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah, really, really. I think business mentors, <laughs> yeah, fun, ironic, think it sleazy to keep people for longer. I, but the I'll tell you what's more sleazy is probably scamming them up front. <laughs> yeah, do you know, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> but the reason why they probably don't want you to keep your client for longer is because you're not going to be signing loads of people up in a month. Like, yeah, it's... You're not going to get the screenshots of going, I've had 15 calls this month. What? Why are no biz- no business mentors asking for the screenshots of the amazing transformations you've got? You know, yeah, <laughs> funny yeah. Funny that, that, isn't funny it? that isn't Here's it? what my, here's <laughs> what uh, our, one of our coaches and our mentorship, here are the results that they're getting. That's fucking sick. That, that would be, that would be better. Um, but anyway, so like, so that's, that's how we, we go about getting in the right type of client. And again, I know a lot of coaches need help with that. Um, and it just gives you a little bit of a, a better start point. And then something that we're quite passionate on is, there's there's coaches that are the bodybuilding coaches that are the bro type coaches that really do hammer people into the floor um and then you've got the the airy fairy um it's okay if you have a pizza um so what are they every day yeah so what are they paying you for (laughs) um just you're you're just sat there telling them it's okay um fine so you have that coach and then i think you probably got a third demographic which are coaches are probably underconfident in being able to push somebody and that feeling of, oh, I don't want them to leave me. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a li- how tough can I be? Yeah. Um, They're so, more worried about their bank balance. Again, about yeah. the, they don't want to push the client and, and upset them yeah. or, or hold them to account. They'd rather just go, oh, as long as they stay for a little bit longer. Now, the problem with all three of these is bodybuilding ones um, are probably going to get a smaller percentage of results because... Um, depending because no, you the know, results if, they do get the results good. Are, yeah the results that do get are superb like superb but for your average Joe going into that they're not going to stick to anything like that no. they'll coach competitors well they'll get competitors great results because mm-hmm. it's a different mindset thing so that that's kind of the problem with that and, and it can result in maybe you know some problems down the line with food relationship or whatever so that's the problem with that the problem with the airy fairy thing like that that's only going to last a few months because the client is still going to be unhappy um, and they're still going to be like as much as you tell me it's okay I do want to lose a bit of weight. So that's why that's going to fail. And then the third one where it's like, oh, I don't really want to push them because they're paying my wages is that I bet they'll pay your wages for a, uh, a shorter period of time because they're not seeing the results. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you actually did push them and had that awkward conversation sometimes, and we have to be stern, 
Like, we don't like it because it's not in our nature t- too much. Yeah, you know, you want to be jovial. You want to be a laugh. You want it to be a nice experience. But it is your job to go pull your finger out. Like, that's not good enough. Yeah. You're not doing the right things. You're, go- you're not going to make progress. Like, I regularly have to say that to a client a week or a couple of clients a week. It's like, you, do, you keep going like this, you will see no progress. So what is the point? Yeah, and that's the biggest the biggest problem that it's coaches face. It's your fucking face. job. Yeah, exactly that. Is it's it's your job to hold people to account to the, to what they said that they want to achieve, and that's why they've hired you. It's why I don't get some of those those types of coaches that were like, oh, I swear I can eat the pizza. Well, I can do it on my own. I don't need fucking you to tell me that. I was doing that on, on my own. I was doing that fine on my own before. Um, and I think that that's the the biggest problem is it's knowing the the line to tread. And look, if if getting results people for you is making them happy and so they can eat pizza forever and they gain weight, then that's a result. Great. But I don't think you can get many more clients doing like that. It's having the fine line between, right, well, you've told me you want to achieve this and you knew this was going to be hard. This is why you've hired me because I'm here to hold you accountable to when it does get hard. That's when they need a coach. More than ever, they need a coach when it's hard. Not when it's easy. When they're checking in as easy as anything, well, yeah, that's the, that's the easiest job in the world as a coach. The hardest is the weeks where they go, oh, I just crumbled, oh, I just felt like this, and oh, I just, you know, I feel like crap. And, oh, and you have to go, well, come on, you did this yourself. Like you've chosen to do this. You've chosen that element of this. You need to make sure that you sacrifice one of these three things because that's what you're here for. Not just go, oh, don't worry about it. Catch up in two weeks. Though. It wouldn't happen in any other thing. Imagine you yeah. going to a dentist, and let, let's just say you went to a dentist, you got loads of fucking cavities or whatever, and they're just like, "Oh, it's okay, don't worry about that." No, no, no. Yeah, no, I am worrying about it. <laughs> like, so I need you, the dentist, to help me with it. <laughs> to tell me what to do. To, yeah. yeah, to help me with it. Like, uh, it's fine. No, that's fine. It's that. fine. No, just so love yourself. Love that, yourself, and your teeth will grow back. Yeah. In it's that. Fine. Yeah. In that case, you would want your dentist to be stern, going, "Right, you need to fucking floss. You need to brush your teeth twice a day. You need to stop fucking yeah. drinking sugar." And drinks. if you don't, this is Whatever. what will happen. Yeah. They show you the next thing. Yeah. Like, that's the next stage of it. So, you go, so that's what your job is as a coach, right? You're being paid. In some cases, more than dentists, by the way. In some cases, more than dentists. Yeah. And yet, you won't go you shouldn't be doing that. You need to make more of an effort with this yeah. because you're too scared. You are literally the dentist going, ah, don't worry, don't worry. Not a problem. Nah. Not a problem. Don't be like that. Like they've paid you for a result, not a mate. Like it's easy to fall into that category when you've known somebody six, seven, eight months and you chat about other stuff or yeah. you should be chatting about other stuff, by the way. Like you should be. It's easy, but in the back of your mind, you have got to really kind of remind yourself at check-ins that what are they there for? They are there to get them a result in whatever way it is that they want to go with their result. It's your job to take your bias out, to take your, you know, feelings of friendship or whatever. You are there to say the right things at the right time when the client needs it. Mm-hmm. Whether that's a kick up the arse, whether it's an arm around the shoulder, whether it's fucking going by the carrot or the stick, it's your job as a coach to read the situation and manage the person to get the result, not to keep them paying you. Correct. So there you go. There you go. How to get client results. A bit more in depth. <clears throat> so like us and that. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, stick around for more videos. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Follow us. Well, Dan Oh, Bicep's why haven't there. we seen an eating challenge yet? Oh, all right. Calm down. It's yeah. coming. All right. It's yeah. just got to diet a little bit longer first. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six get, months. get that hunger up. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one.